with I'm really trivia. jazzed there's, now. Hey, yeah, there's there's <laughs> 10 questions in ATL on Fire Trivia. And I don't know, the best anybody's done is maybe six, Alan, in terms of oh. uh, the, the correct answers. I think six, Anna and Simon got six. They got six or seven. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Like, it was a controversy on that one with your kids. They did very well. <laughs> but I, I believe they are the – There was uh, two of them, so – yeah and they are right. they're they're smarter than any of us combined so um what year were yellow and red cards introduced to soccer wow <laughs> if you that... need a lifeline i'll give you a hint okay yes you want a lifeline <laughs> it, yeah. it happened during a world cup oh okay well that so that at least kind of that narrows you... it that narrows it by like yeah you got Groups of four, right? Of years. Yes, that's right. That's right. I can uh, take a guess about the impetus for it. Wait, Alan, let me tell you this. Right? I'll give you some I history think on that. The, imp- the impetus, I could be wrong. Um, it could be totally talking um, out my whatever. But um, I think the impetus, there were a couple of Uruguayan teams that were very, very physical. And they just started basically to use the foul basically to you know nullify any kind of you know advantages and Hmm. i wouldn't be surprised if it came about to try that's part of the story i'm gonna get once you answer i'm gonna give you the background on it because i've i'm supposed to knowledge but i've researched this did that uruguayan is this the uh it's like the grandfather of suarez that that, was he biting people um so yeah i don't know uh hmm it would have been early part of the 1900s. Uh, I don't know the years of the World Cup going back that oh, far. Keep I, in mind, the, the World Cup is it's pretty modern. a relatively modern thing. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't go back that far. Right. Doesn't it go back to maybe the 30s? Something like that. Uh, I'll say 1950. Not, not too far. If that's 20 years off. It was uh, in 1970, the FIFA World Cup in Mexico. Uh, in Mexico uh, City? The yeah the the yellow and the reds were introduced. the The concept was actually from a guy named Ken Aston, who is an Englishman uh, who passed away in two thousand one. Um, but he, his his roots in in I guess refereeing are pretty long. He he refed a lot of games that included like Argentina England back in the day, and a lot of these games were really heated and it, you know, some of the things just politically, whether it was Chile versus Italy at the time, um, were creating a lot of, you know, angst before these games started, you kind of knew it was going to get chippy. And, um, I believe during the, the FA cup in like 1966 or something like that, um, he was, he was a ref and, one of the things, one of the controversies about it was, is they would write people's name down when they booked it, but it wasn't like a public demonstration that they had been cautioned. The ref was like writing it down in his book. And I believe it was uh, both of the, uh, uh, the Charlton brothers, Jack and, and who's the other one, Bobby, Bobby got booked, but it wasn't d- disclosed until the game was over that they had actually been written up in the book. Right. And huh. so there was a, there was some, uh, you know, kerfuffle about that. And so as, as Ken Aston was thinking about this problem, he was like driving through the streets of England and was at a stoplight and it turned yellow and red. And he kind of had the vision of like, you know, yellow is like, hey, slow down and red, you're out of here. Um, and that supposedly is the story that I read online. Take that huh. with some truthiness. But that's, huh. that's how um, the concept came to be. Hmm. Interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. We, uh at uh here on the atl on fire podcast um we only know a little bit about mls but we know a lot about the history of cards that's right (laughs) (laughs) i actually have a teammate out here who uh, received two yellows in the same match and the referee forgot that he was uh uh, carded already yeah it's pretty impressive so in u.s soccer refereeing going into 2020 how many grade levels are available for refs? How many different distinctions of refereeing are there in terms of licenses or groups of where you're? I'm, you're, I'm you're... going to go with who cares? Well, that's a good answer. <laughs> I think Matt Noop would know that answer. Uh, I, figured, I figured Dave would actually know this. Phone a friend. <laughs> just shoot. Uh, just shoot. I'm going to go with uh, five. That's 
Spot on. That's correct. That's what I was going to guess too. Wow. It was previously. I had no idea. Yeah, it was previously nine grades, and now they've grouped those into five to make yeah. it easier. Where I remember when they changed that. Yeah, grassroots <laughs> is like nine to seven have moved into that. Regional six to five have moved into oh. regional. National three to four, and then I guess pro and FIFA are both one and twos, which is like the highest highest level. All right, Alan, proving that the FC Cincinnati fans are not shite. So moving from <laughs> refereeing to coaching, U.S. soccer coaching licenses include designations of grassroots, D, C, B, youth, youth A, and pro. Is that true or false? 50-50. Uh, I'm going to go with false. It's actually true, hmm. um, which I didn't know that either. Um, so I don't know, Dave, you know anything about coaching licenses? Because I was kind of curious about this as the positions open mm-hmm. in Atlanta United. I was going to kind of flex. It sounded, it sounded right, but I was like, there has to be a trick there. Maybe. Yeah, no, it's, it's, <laughs> but yeah. more importantly, uh, the next question is, is how much does a pro license cost? So if you want to go through all the programs mm-hmm. and become mm-hmm. a pro, which I guess would be like division, you know, grade one or two in the traditional sense, what do you got to pony up in terms of cash? Is it more or less than six thousand uh, dollars? For this is for the uh, for the for coaching a, license for a pro. Yeah. For if you are able oh. to go through all the classes and you want to be a pro, and you've got done all your homework, you still got to pay six thousand. Six thousand dollars is a very arbitrary uh, number to pick. That's what we do here on trivia. It almost feels like that's the number you have to spend. Um, but but is I'm going to say or less. I'm going to say more. It is more. It's ten thousand yeah. dollars for a pro license. How weird! Yeah. It's very extensive. When you get up to the higher licenses, you actually not only have to, you know, you know, show proficiency in certain coaching things and drills and stuff, but you actually have to perform them. You have to be able yeah. to demonstrate certain skills to show that you can, dem- you know, you're able to demonstrate those in coaching capacity. Yeah, this in, my, is- in my research, I was, it was interesting. On the, and it seems like the coaches have to have some level of knowledge and licensing from the refereeing standpoint as well, whether that's like learned in like they are, it's wavered in some capacity, but they have to prove that their understanding of how the game is officiated is proficient, proficient. This all of this talk about coaching licenses is exactly why I'm starting the Alan Kolhep School of Soccer Mediocrity, uh, okay. which basically doesn't require any investment in in coaching. You basically just get a bunch of kids and like let them run around and let them have fun. That's that's my style of coaching. That's excellent. That's Love actually it. how the game was intended. Yes. <laughs> um, None of this. I mean, I you know going back to youth soccer, you watch these fathers and mothers and whatever coaching and they've got all these lines and the 24 you know cones and different formations and whatever and you know sometimes as a coach myself some parents will reach out to me and they're like well what do you think I should do I said put a goal at either side get two or three players on the field and tell them to have fun yeah yeah make sure they touch, touch the ball a lot yeah question number five Alan who is the coach of the Montreal Impact Mm. Oh, wow. that's an uh, easy one. I know that one. Softball. Yeah. The coach came to the club this last year and said he wanted to coach. They didn't even go out and try to acquire him. Is that Thierry Henry? Yes. You got one it. One nil yeah. to the Arsenal. One nil to the Arsenal. Well done. The penalty kick, or PK as we call it, was introduced before or after 1900. <laughs> the penalty kick. Mikey Dobbs reached the, I'm end of say, the uh, internet. Wait, wait, wait. Mikey I, Dobbs. I keep the struggling end of the to find 10 internet. trivia <laughs> questions, but this is a good He's one. Clearly gone. Now, Mikey Dobbs, what did you discover there at the end of the soccer internet? Are there it's, little rainbow people? There's unbelievable stuff researching <laughs> the that's why I love doing this, because it's fascinating. Okay. Uh, okay. I would say that uh, given the the, uh, the slow pace with which the red and the yellow card were developed, uh, that there were probably also a slow pace to or a slower pace than we would have imagined to the uh, sort of the lines on the field and the penalty area. Probably like 
goalkeepers didn't have a, an area or something like that. Uh, whatever Sil- Sylvester Stallone was doing in the goal back then. <laughs> there wasn't uh, walk about. I'm going to say after. After. You're wrong. It was in 1890 that, or 1891, I believe, that oh, it was introduced. Ooh. Yeah, and it was actually uh, invented by a goalkeeper, I guess, a business named William McCrum. What kind of goalkeeper invents a penalty kick? Yeah, I don't know. He's an That's Irishman. That's incredible, right? That goalkeeper should be, you know, thrown out of the goalkeeping fraternity. Yeah. And goalkeepers should say, look, there's no penalty no matter what. We can do whatever the, you know, F we want. How far away is the penalty spot from the goal line in yards? <laughs> it depends. Depends on if your official is an Atlanta official who marks off 13, uh, 12 yards. That's correct. I was going to say it depends on the size of the youth referee's feet. Can I? uh, (laughs) Yeah, exactly. We got two more. We got two more. We're going to get back to business here. How many MLS teams are there right now? Wait, Alan had nothing to say there. Can I add something to that penalty kick idea? Yeah, Yeah, yeah. Uh, when I played with you, I don't know if you guys remember this, but when I played with you guys uh, at, with Sting, um, I remember Sting, it. Sting Gold, I know, I, I hard, hard, hard to remember that long ago. Uh, I played sweeper, and part of the, the um, what's the, the word I want? The deal that J- our manager, Jason Russell, made with me, because we were so chock full of attackers, uh, he said, well, if you play at center back, then you can take all the penalty kicks. Um so I got to take all the penalties. Yeah. And one time we were playing, um, I don't know who we were playing, a, a, a decent team. We got a penalty. I took it. I scored it. But it was um, it was in the first half, and there was must have been a spot 12 yards marked already, and no problem. In the second half, there was a second penalty, and I went to take it, and the referee couldn't see the spot, so he marked off 13 yards. It was that extra yard was really dramatic. <laughs> and uh, is that, is I that argued with him. The only penalty kick you've ever missed was mismarked. Is that what this story is about? I haven't missed many, but I missed that one. Uh, yeah, I that's think the where keeper, this whole thing is going. Excuses, keeper Alan. Excuses. We're on yeah. to the next question. Okay, well, I fine. thought, wait, 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 wait. What? I thought we were going to, which I think has been mentioned on the podcast before, we're going to mention that Mikey Dobbs combining two of the trivia questions is, as far as I know, the first and only player to be sent off arguing that a penalty kick in favor of our team was a terrible call. That's true. you got to have principles, <laughs> Dave. <laughs> when the ref is doing a terrible job of refereeing the game and then gives you a penalty kick on your behalf and he's got that wrong, I'm not going to change my argument from yelling at him for the last 30 minutes. If he's doing a terrible job, I'm going to let him know. If we had that on videotape, it would have been epic. Ah, so good. <laughs> it's been hard to get to the next trivia question. You guys ready? All right. I'm ready right. now. And this is like a softball. How many MLS teams are there? That's not a softball for me. Uh... List them all. No, don't do that. Yeah, don't list them all. Just take I, a I, shot. I truly <laughs> don't know. Uh, 20, uh, 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 20, 28. 26, you're only two off. And there's yeah, close. there's uh, plans to expand to 30 by 2023. The final question is, our Atlanta United goalkeeper, the Goose, Brad Guzan, mm-hmm. had 144 appearances for this EPL club. Villa. Yeah, well done. All right, thanks for listening. If anybody actually made it this far in the podcast – love to hear your feedback on twitter at atl on fire and tell your friends to subscribe we are on itunes google play and really any sort of podcast uh, platform that you're